Hey there, Philip here, and today I want to talk about immersion and how uh, I think that we need technology that is less immersive, not more. Uh, this is a blog post that I published about a month or month and a half ago, and they, this was before Apple Vision Pro, okay? So this was not um, something where I was trying to react to a new VR headset from Apple, uh, but... Um, this is something that I have been thinking about for many, many years. And I think it shows in my projects, it's particularly my, my game that is released, Knights of San Francisco, and also the game that I'm working on. So I, I really this this blog post, and there was a bunch of interesting uh, talk about the blog post on things like Hacker News. And there were some people who... Uh, were confused about like what do I mean by immersive, right? And uh, there was the, there was my fault because I did not actually define anything. I was I tried to skim because I don't like articles that start with the definition because it seems to me too kind of you know educational <laughs> or whatever. Like too you know trying to to sound too smart or something like that, uh, but. I will do it now. So I this is my chance to say basically what I said in the blog post in a more um, refined way. Although also I write better than I speak. So, you know, anyway. Okay, so what I mean by immersion is basically this idea of um, how much do you need to work for your... To, to to see what the author wants you to see, right? So, for example, um, it's similar to Marshall McLuhan's Hot and Cold Media or High and Low Involvement. These are all similar connected terms, in my head at least. And uh, it means that, for example, if you have Lord of the Rings as a book and as a movie, then... If you are in the movie theater, like you don't need to come up with how the orc probably looks like. You don't have to, you know, imagine much because it's right in front of you and you're there. And also a lot of the rest of the real world is abstracted. Like you're in a dark room Nobody's talking to you. Nothing's either other. No, no, no other thing is happening than that particular movie, right? If you're reading a book, uh, you can still be immersed in the book, as in like you can be cognitively immersed. Like you are like, whoa, this is really cool, and you read it, and uh, but but you work more for each of the scenes, right? You have to imagine these scenes, and also. Uh, there's less sensory immersion because you're literally just reading words on um, a piece of paper. Uh, so that's kind of like hopefully obvious. And then of course you could say like, okay, so there's that and then there's immersion. Like if you were playing a VR game, Lord of the Rings, then of course you are even more sensorically immersed. Uh, that, that medium is even hotter or even... Uh, uh, lower participation like you don't you don't need to i mean higher participation you you, you don't you're just immersed more okay <laughs> so these are two like levels the the sensory um and the 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 more like cognitive or intellectual immersion and i don't talk about intellectual immersion i know that there are books that can immerse you a lot but that's not what this is about, okay? So another, and this is important, this is not just about talking about, you know, VR headsets and Apple Vision Pro or whatever. Uh, this is about talking, uh, and it's not just about Lord of the Rings and and stuff like this. It's about more mundane things as well. Like, for example take newspapers where you, when you read newspapers if anyone is still reading 
actual newspapers. I don't, I don't, I don't buy newspapers. But if you read newspapers, you have to really, again, you have to read the actual words and then reconstruct the scenes and everything in your head, right? Then you have things like TV, you know, cable TV came, and then you don't need to reconstruct anything in your head. You, you can kind of just sit down and it kind of washes over you. There's been people that talking heads and everyone's uh, have their own opinions and everyone's talking and there's lots of moving pictures, right? Then you have something like Facebook or Twitter where everything is like you, you have text, but it's partic not particularly long most of the time. And there's definitely a bunch of pictures and GIFs and short videos that uh, again give you a bunch more to you know to, to kind of immerse yourself and then you go to something like TikTok where it's all video and it's all short video and it's all kind of it's not just the medium itself but also the algorithm is trying to pick videos that are super immersive in that even though it's just like a small screen in front of you, it's not something that you place on your head. Uh, it's still immersive because something is happening all the time on TikTok. If if you you know if if you're scrolling through videos on TikTok, uh, there's never like a slow <laughs> video. Like I mean, most most of the time it's not. And if if it is, there's definitely some kind of strong hook to keep you watching that particular video, right? So that's where I talk, what I talk about. And that's when I say we need technology that is less immersive, not more. That's what I mean. I don't mean let's write boring books that uh, people are not immersed in intellectually. I mean, maybe uh, the fact that a lot of really smart people are working really hard to get us sensorically immersed bigger screens, brighter colors, uh, more VR-y things, more AR-y things, maybe that's not the best thing that we could be, that they could be working on, okay? And this is another controversial thing. Um, it's like, how come you, you know, suggest something like this? Of course, you know, free market, we should just like, everyone should work on anything that pays the money uh, and to me it's all right i get it i'm not a communist or anything like this i i get that you know there's free market and obviously if apple wants to work on an amazing vr headset or if some other company wants to work on an amazing uh, phone that is very has very vibrant colors or if a software company wants to work on an algorithm that makes you more engaged, therefore more immersed for longer periods of time, uh, then um, by all means, they should do it. Uh, I'm talking about like not saying to people that they shouldn't be doing something, as in like, I don't want to ban <laughs> immersion, okay? I'm just saying maybe we're, maybe you should correct a little bit, like maybe we're doing this too much, you know? So, um, the thought experiment here is imagine that you had some magic ability to, um, to distribute the talent that is currently coming into the market like the the let's say there's 10,000 of the brightest people who are currently starting their careers or you know like yeah really starting their careers let's say in the whole world there's 10,000 of the best of the best creatives uh people who uh, are engineers people who will lead products inventors uh researchers uh all all of these people right so let's say there are 10,000 of them. And let's say you magically have the ability to say um, how many, like to, to distribute them, to tell them, okay, so I don't know, this many people will be working on this problem. This many people will be working on this problem, right? Um, 
thought experiment, I know, but how many of the 10,000 people would you assign to working on immersive environment, like in, in, immersive entertainment? Would it be 50% or, or 90%? Sometimes it feels like, you know, if you, if you really count all the, all the really, 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 really smart people who work on things like VR headsets and bright displays and things like software things like TikTok that increase engagement, then it really is the vast majority of, of them that, that they, are, they are working on it. And then there's a bunch of people who work on things like, I don't know, just like the more important real life things. Uh, so it may not be true, but in Silicon Valley, it definitely felt that way, that a lot of people were just kind of somehow working on things that let other people be immersed in some kind of entertainment, be it a game, uh, Netflix or whatever, uh, or uh, or just uh, social media and and kind of the engagement that comes from that, right? So, yeah, I I don't think I don't think that rationally we would be in this in this scenario if we if we really like if we could somehow magically think about like how to assign talent in um in civilization but it it happens and it happens obviously mostly for for money right like if you want to make money uh you want to work for someone who has money and companies that are good at uh, immersing and entertaining people in an immersive way, engaged um, way, are doing much better than other companies, right? Um, if uh, you uh, if you want to have good money as an employee, you and I always say this: you should focus on doing things that rich people want to buy, right? So if if you, let's say you are an inventor and you invent something that makes lives of many poor people a little bit better, uh, unfortunately, you will make less money than if you are in the same inventor who makes stock trading a little bit better because as if your if your customers are very rich people obviously they will pay you more they will be able to pay you more especially if you if they if you have something that makes them even more money right so that's that's the way it is and i'm not complaining about this although some people might but um uh, but so but this is like kind of a natural gra gravitational force that keeps smart people going into this direction that might not be the best for society and uh, and humanity in in general right so uh, w what am i saying is and again i'm i'm not saying that we should ban <laughs> VR or anything like this. I'm I'm saying that uh, there there is a disbalance in my opinion on what people are focusing on and how many really talented people are working on things that are maybe not as important for the future of uh, humanity. I guess. All right. So uh, now. The solution is, in my opinion, not going to be banning someone or something or, you know, involvement from the government or whatever. Uh, but it is going to come from people, as is often the case. And 
So the only reason I wrote this article and the only reason I'm doing this weird video is that I think a lot of the really, really talented people have the ability to just say, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to choose a thing that's not about immersion. I don't know if I'm making sense, but what I'm saying is maybe up until now, you didn't realize that there is even such a thing as working on things that are immersive versus working on other things. Uh, and all, just by like giving you this idea, all this this dichotomy or this, this kind of scale uh, where you can land, can give you um, kind of a, a more informed way to think about your career and uh, about what, what you want to be doing, right? So, uh, so I'm basically, I'm talking to you as someone who is probably, possibly going to be one of the 10,000 people who are uh, going to be a big deal for society in terms of invention and in terms of engineering and stuff like this, right? Um, and you can, of course, end up working on immersive technology, and that's fine. But I think it's also good to, if you do that, to realize that you are, like, to, to do this in a way that is conscious. Consciously know that I'm, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to work on immersive technology on high uh, involvement technology, engagement technology, right? TikToks and stuff like this. Uh, versus I could be working on something else. And that's all. Uh, and I think for, uh, like, especially in the tech industry, right? We are not starving artists. A lot of the times people who work happen to be good at programming will do just fine in terms of income. So I think so I'm not asking anyone, uh, hopefully uh, you understand this, that it's not like, oh, you should feel bad uh, because uh, it, it much it would be much better if you stopped working on whatever you're doing and just starve to death. <laughs> no, I'm talking about things like, okay, so you have two career paths in front of you. You can do a bunch of money, and you can do you can make a bunch of money, or you can make a even more bunch of money. <laughs> and one of them is about less immersive stuff, and one of them is about making people engaged a lot. And I think uh, just make the decision, like you know, like you can do it. You don't need to just follow the the path that gives you more money, right? You, you obviously understand this. All right, so I, I feel like this is controversial. People will think that I'm an idiot and that's fine. I, they already think that. Um, but I still want to say what I'm not saying, uh, just to be completely clear, right? I'm not saying that VR is useless. I know that VR is very, um, uh, very useful in many ways. And, and also, I'm not saying that entertainment is useless, that we should not be working on entertainment at all, or that we should not be talking, not working on immersive entertainment at all. That's not, I'm not saying that, okay? I'm, I'm, I don't say ban uh, this kind of research, uh, or I, I'm also not saying that we should all just stop working in... Uh, companies and start working in NGOs and saving, uh, uh, you know, starving kids. Uh, this is, by the way, I'm, this is a direct, direct reaction to someone on Hacker News who's like, well, this is all good, but like, of course, there's always something to, to do. We, we can't all be uh, saving starving kids. I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I don't say I'm I'm not like 
I think there's this reaction that some people have where they, when they feel a little bad about some information, they will immediately take that uh, argument that they're not comfortable about, about, and then they will just like pull it to its complete extreme, right? Like, oh, Philip is actually talking about us. Uh, we we don't deserve to have good things, and we should all just go uh, to um, humanitarian organizations, and nothing else is uh, is good enough, right? And that's not obviously. Hopefully, you understand that this, this is not what I'm talking about, and it's kind of silly that someone thinks that that's that's what people are talking about. Small, small um, decisions like, okay, will I work for uh, a big company that does a lot of, you know, engagement for engagement because they want to sell ads because that makes a lot of money? Or do I go to this other company that is maybe uh, a little less about that and a little more about something else? That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about you just leaving your life uh, and going to Africa or uh, Middle East to to uh, care for kids. Okay, cool. So in summary, immersion is cool. I I do it right. Like once in a while, I play games that are immersive. I don't have a VR headset, but I have played with VR headsets before. It was amazing. I love it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, being able to immerse yourself in a high involvement medium feels great and nobody's disputing it and it's cool it's cool uh but perhaps perhaps <laughs> uh giving it a little perhaps we're giving it a little more weight than we should um uh, maybe you know uh maybe this is not what parents want to see <laughs> <laughs> most of the time uh, i'm uh, i'm just i'm joking it's it's uh this is not the um you know i'm this uh, again i'm kind of like going towards vr because it's the classic thing to talk about but maybe the the high resolution screens and the more vibrant colors and the uh the facebooks and twitters and and tiktoks of the world aren't as important to like really give them what feels like 80% of the talent that is currently in the world uh, in terms of like creativity and stuff like this, right? So, and I think that uh, hopefully you'll agree there are other arguably more important and more rewarding problems to work on. Well, uh, that has been a little bit of a rant uh, but I hope that it gives you a little bit of food for thought. Uh, please do comment in the comments or send me an email or whatever. I do want to talk about this. This is something that I really care about and have been caring about for literally years. Um, and so I may be completely wrong about these things and that's fine. Uh, I just need to, to, to know that that's the case. <laughs> Cool. I'll see you next time. Cheers.